Last episode we got this guy all the way to Duna and back. We lost out some research on Ike, but that's okay. Uh, what we want to try and do this time is get to E, but we unlock some new toys. Uh, that's for space stations. We do have this cockpit now, which might be useful because we can put the sides on the top and the bottom maybe. Stuff we want to take back. We also have the command pod 2, which can hold 3 crew. Uh, don't really know what the advantage of that is because any science the crew does you can transmit back for 100 percent so i don't know why you would want to take three crew it would be useful for rescue missions if you needed to bring people back so i'm sure my opinions of these things will change as, as i learn more about the game okay so this is what we took up before this time we have this tank uh, our boosters were this, 1440 liquid fuel, and this one has 2880 liquid fuel, and it's double mass. So, one of these replaces two of these, which is good. You would expect, I would expect, that there should be some actual advantage to, to upgrading from one to the other, uh, but it, it's, it's literally, you know... Same size, same weight, same fuel, just orange. <laughs> um, so my idea is that if we can take one of these guys up and see this, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, eight hundreds, um, which is where this guy. So six times three sixty is. 2160 and the orange guy gives us 2880 so taking one of these guys up replaces all of that oh, which is pretty awesome so uh, what do I do is I'm going to rebuild all of this I think what's this that's a separator this is DRCS so we're going to pretty much start from scratch here Let's stick that there for the moment. And what I wanted to do is break this guy out into three different engines. And the way to do that, I believe, is this adapter. Okay, so it takes the fuel through. And is that, does that do fuel stuff? Well, we'll find out. And then turn that into a tri-coupler, like so. Just so we get this sort of even flow here. And then stick three nuclear engines on it. And I think what we have there is the equivalent of what we had before. Um, so if we do an adapter on top here, like so, then that should, in theory, be something we can, you know, test launch and see what happens. So we're going to need a decoupler from that. That's cool. I haven't used that yet. Rocket Max Brandy Coupler is the big one. I'm just going to go with the small one. So we'll, we'll blast off, separate, and return with the parachute. Uh, we're going to need some wings. Otherwise, this thing's going to be impossible to fly. Uh, and that should be a decent launch vehicle right there. This is this should be the mission vehicle essentially. So we have all this room on the sides to put scientific instruments and all that kind of stuff. Um, and But uh, we want the scientific stuff to come back, so that'll all go up here at some point. So let's see if this thing launches. Oh yeah, and I installed Chatterer. So I, I'm not really doing mods yet. I want to learn more about the mods. I don't want any mods that make the game too easy. Um, but I do want mods that make things interesting and this is one of those guys this when we're up in space will create Various noises for us now. How the heck do we get rid of this thing? Change icon position oh Here it is change icon position I wonder where it was before let's um uh, I put it. Uh, 
there. That's good enough. So clicking that should get rid of it. Right. Okay, so let's see what happens when we use this engine or these three engines with this fuel. <laughs> right, so we can't. We don't have enough fuel to lift that up, but. Right, so let's go back to assembly. Um, so that's good. Now we want to put the science vehicle on top of this thing. And um, what I was thinking of doing there is basically. I, I want to find a way to do that, what we have before. Oops. But maybe we'll use the fuselage stuff. This stuff gives us surfaces to attach to. And I was thinking maybe we can attach the science modules around that. Like so. Maybe. So that's six right there, you know, we double that up and we have more than we had before. It doesn't look like it wants to attach. Let's stick that down there. Like so. Uh, that's, that's a lot of science to take anywhere we go and we can bring it all back. Before we had um, nine. Now we have 12. So on top of that we'll obviously need some aerodynamic cones. Or, ooh, this is even better. This is kind of perfect for the new parachute. The big parachute. That's not big. This must be a big one. Yeah, like so. So then, yeah, they all just sort of come back with it. And, uh, and it still leaves the central point there for us. Um, so we need some more fuselage, I think. I think we're going to have to detach this. Like so. seems okay and that comes out and then we just connect it back to that uh, underneath this we can put solar power and batteries this is a 2x3 I prefer the 1x6's and we only really need I guess, three of these things this appears to be the front I might lower that a little bit and then we can stick some uh, battery in there. Just three of those should do. Like so. So that's uh, a lot of voltage and endless power. And we also need communications. So let's see. What... Oh, wait, we've got these ones now. Let's do some between these. Ah, uh, it's the, the heavier versions of these. Okay. Um, we also need landing struts. Which can go there. So that shoots go up, come down, land on these guys. Because all this will be gone. And if for some reason we can land... Well, with this, we're not trying to, to make landing vehicles yet. I think we'll come back to that another time. This is going to go away because we're going to surround this by boosters and things. What we also need is some lights. Big lights. That might do the trick. Um, maybe I should light it up. There, there we go. So that'll shine some light on that. And we need Mysterious Q. So we'll just do that. What am I missing? Uh, communications, the communitron. We only need one of these guys. It looks like we can just put it there. That's pretty good. Comms. Don't need that yet. We're not doing any landing stuff. 
A barometer requires atmospheric pressure, so don't really know how to use this thing yet. Um, I'm going to leave it off for now and we'll come back to it another time. Mobility enhancer. Is this the... Is this a ladder? <laughs> That's a ladder. Well, this is not really the vehicle for getting out. Uh, in fact, let's add some more fuselage in here. Because there's not much space there. And I really don't want the same uh, problems I had before with getting out. Getting in and out of the command module. It was such a pain. Oh, oh my goodness. Let me disconnect this thing. Let's take that bit. <laughs> my goodness. Right. Maybe set that back to one. Okay. So in theory, we're gonna, we're gonna land this back on Kerbin. Hopefully we get a water landing anyway. And this is our mission fuel here, with three nuclear engines to drive it. So now we need to be able to launch this thing. And for that, we'll start with some a radial decoupler in the middle, and another big tank. Like so, and this time we get to use the mainsail engine. This is what we unlocked last time. Like so. Now this is a little bit. I think it might damage this stuff, so we're going to have to lower this. But we're also going to be trying to uh, have multiple, multiple of these anyway. Uh, so I don't know what the boosters will do this time, but we're going to add boosters anyway. Um, structure, we want decoupler again. And then we want boosters. So, we'll start off with this one to begin with, get it to the right height. That's still a little bit too high. That's too low. <laughs> good enough. Right, this is something that we can repeat and we shall do that after I stick some aerodynamics here. And we also want that adapter that there. Okay, so we're going to repeat this pattern multiple times. So we grab this guy off and we'll set it to six if we can, get away with six. weight's going to be on this without launch support, so I really want to get this thing lower. The targeting it becomes harder and harder. I think if I come down here and get playing with this, it might be a little bit easier to see. Yeah. There we go. The main cells are just a little bit lower. Right. So, main cells fire at the start as well. Then we detach the boosters, we detach the mainsails, and we're left with the atomic engines. 
well, this will be interesting. Now, action groups. Action groups. Custom number one, always the solar panels. Cool. That's because I always have trouble with that. Alright. So this may launch, may not. This is going to be the Exoplanet Nuclear Mark II. Um, and to avoid the spinning, we're going to put wings on it as well. Got the Lux. Why not? Put one there. Big, big, big weight, obviously. Uh, we should probably install the advanced uh, stability augmentation system. Oh, it's huge. So I guess it goes here. Right. And then we don't technically need it when we're... Well, no, we're going to keep this for the machine. We don't need it when we're coming back in. Use the regular SAS for that. Uh, no RCS, I'm not worried about RCS yet until we start doing docking procedures and things like that. Is this going to have anything important? Perhaps not. Hard to say. Let's, uh, let's see if this thing maybe launches. Always nervous, always nervous. Ah, fuel lines. Forgot the fuel lines. Okay, well, it's very jiggly. Oh boy. <laughs> right, we're going to add some structure to this thing. Um, but fuel lines first. Alright, so we actually want to do a, a peel off thing. All of these X6 are going to go away first, and then one, two, finally three. So we have to break up this section here into stages. Um, also, this is the middle. Well, we need to we need to put the fuel lines first to make it make sense. Okay, so the source, the first click is where it comes from, and then where it's going to. So if this is the last layer, we'll go counterclockwise. This to this. And then this to this. This is called the asparagus design. And of course, I forgot to turn on six times. Shivers. Okay. Wait. Let's try this again. Delete. to do this manually looks like yeah right so we could have just done that way that's fine and then this to this and again on the other side this to this oh not happy with that one and back to that right so we want this guy to peel off first, these two. This one and this one to go. This one and this one. And that should leave this one and this one. Right, there we 
we go. There's our phases. Yeah. Okay. Now, structural integrity. Clearly quite important. Six ways. Done. And in theory, maybe this will be enough as well. We shall see. <laughs> and finally, the last thing we can do to give ourselves a, a leg up on this is towers, which need to go here. Right, let's see what happens. Keep in mind, I have no idea how much fuel we have and how far we can get with it. This really is a, uh, a random trial run. We'll turn, turn on the SAS, increase the thrust up to 100%, and blast off. Just okay, we're, we're going to be coming back in for... Well, we lost a whole bunch of parachutes doing that too. Yes, exactly. Things went terribly wrong. <laughs> Wrong fuel lines got cut, maybe? Well, let's try out the lights and... Oh no, we lost the lights. <laughs> There's no lights. Wow, what a mess. Oh. We lost some of our landing gears. <laughs> oh no. Well, let's hope for a gentle touch down. We'll speed this up. And see what these remaining parachutes can do for us. Uh, probably about 4,000 meters to deploy. There we go. I Uh, we are coming down very fast still, and then um, that all went horribly wrong. <laughs> see you back in the construction shop. Let's see what the final touchdown looks like on this uh, broken broken ship. And clunk. <laughs> We won't get any signs from this. Unless you get signs for failures. No. No signs. Okay. Alright, I'm going to try it again, this time without the boosters. Just to see what kind of ship this really is. Uh, let's move this to the front. It just seemed like when we detached this... You have to watch closely to make sure the correct one detaches. We're going to see this line here. Okay. Let's, let's give it a go. Sands boosters. Alright. Resources. SAS on. Increase throttle and... <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to let you fly. 
Same deal. Okay, well, we're not going to wait to come back down this time. So the whole problem was stability of the system once we detached the first phase. Maybe that can be fixed just with some structural integrity, um, which we want six ways. Like so. Maybe. Maybe. Because we're sort of, we're, we're blowing this joint. It's possible we could also fix it just by doing this. Having two joints instead of just the one. Let's see what happens. Go and high orbit if we do achieve orbit. Okay. Well, clearly I don't know something I need to know with respect to asparagus rocket design. Because that was pretty awful. Let's have a look at our apoapsis. But, wow, no boosters and we've almost achieved orbit. Well, our apoapsis, and then we'll see if we can achieve orbit once we reach it. Right. We have our main cells still with a little bit of fuel. We will find out if that is enough to get into orbit. This is the first time I've used the main cells and these massive tapes. Tap, tap, tap. Yeah. There's the horizon. So it's given that we're going to be using extreme thrust here, we probably want to do it right before the apoapsis. And then we just thrust until this is that an equivalent height? <laughs> right about there okay so that's a 47 second burn we clearly don't have enough main cell fuel for that but we'll do our best because if we put the boosters on or we add more main cell fuel, then we're definitely going to get our vehicle up here uh, with, with enough fuel for orbit and leaving the solar system. But we may be on a real mission here, so we'll see what happens with the attempt to get into orbit. Because we have more fuel than the last one, and we're going to go to EVE instead of Duna. And we used some of our mission fuel to get in orbit last time as well. It's a bit of a heavy vehicle, I gotta say. And here we go. 
Let's see how fast we can achieve orbit. If we just run out of oh boy. But it does not look right at all. Okay, it's enough of that. So now it's a five minute Yeah, that's what I was worried about. see what happens. Let's just get rid of this and play it by ear. We are still going up, which is good. And we are still... No, we're about to, to hit atmosphere again. So I don't think this is going to work. Hmm. Okay, well, I'll cut back and we'll see what happens. Alright, so that didn't work. We're back here. This joint is not very good. <laughs> what are our options? We've got hydraulic detachment manifolds. Don't really. The question for 450 newtons, I assume. So it actually pushes back better than the others. And what about its strength? Crash time, say, meters per second. Same as all the others, but it does it does sit closer and will possibly not wobble as much. Then we may not have room to fit six of them. Hmm. Well, let's find out. So, hydraulic detachment manifold. I don't think that we actually are on the hydraulic detachment manifolds there, to be honest. Let's go one times and make sure we get it on it. It's hard to tell. There is one way to do it, we need to touch it. Okay. So, yep, that's clearly correct. So we want six of those. Lower than the atomic engine is good. Lots of structural integrity, maybe good. <laughs> um, right, fuel lines. So, this is our front. Right, now unfortunately all of our detachments are now incorrect, so we're going to add in those extra phases again. The first phase is this guy. Oh boy, this is going to be much harder to see. And while we're here, let's do the other one to phase four. Like so. Okay, and to the other side. This one should be phase five. Four. Right, that in theory is what we need. <laughs> Let's see if in practice it is going to work. Mm -hmm. 
boom, boom, boom. How do we join these things together? Hmm. Yes. Interface leaves a lot to be desired. Okay, let's give it another go. Go yeah, first attachment coming up. Oh, that was pretty that was pretty sweet. And now we start to get this video. Well, nothing that you need. Well, uh, the use of sale, I'm afraid, because you're underway. Alexa, let's try and turn ourselves up right back in. Clean the easy target. 90. It's probably good enough. 4 degrees. Seems fairly stable so far. One easy way to track the altitude I found is right here. And that'll do. So, don't know how much fuel we have left in those engines. Let's have a look. More than last time, we were slightly more efficient, but still not much. I don't know if it's going to be enough to put us in orbit. We'll see. Okay, here we go. We're going to do our vertical, oh, sorry, horizontal burst here until we run out of fuel and see what happens. I don't think we have much fuel. Don't have high hopes. So we need more control and we need more fuel. Those two things are evident. One thing we could obviously do is just simply add more fuel. That would probably work. Get rid of that completely for now. Take the engines off. And we just add another stack. See, we need some structural. Like so, but mm, aerodynamics. Let's see, is there anything here that swept wings? Prototype swept back wing generates lift. Lift rating 0 0.4, 0 0.7, 0 0.3. rudder. What's this? Control surface. Air intake. Don't need that. Tail connector. Don't need that. These are more for aircraft, I assume. So we're lifting double the weight, roughly speaking. But these engines are pretty powerful. Let's see what happens. Jiggly, 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 and that's broken. That's definitely broken. That's without a doubt broken. That's hopefully better. I guess we'll find out as we go. Throttle up and blast it. Yeah, I'm going to have to die here. 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 Yeah, I'm going to
I'm flying something for real. So many pre flight checks. Gears off. Now I have added an inline advanced stabilizer. It's operational, which means it's using electricity. Uh, but that's okay, we're still connected to the power station. <sighs> well, let's see if that's enough to stabilize everything <laughs> when the first rocket goes away. <laughs> We are visibly wobbling before we've launched. Here we go. Oh, they exploded in. They exploded in a big way. Uh, yeah, that's going to be the problem. Oh, okay, let's see if we have a problem. Hmm. Well, I guess we can test the ability for this thing to land. I'm using the SAS to try and slow down the twists and turns. <laughs> yeah, we're going to land on solid ground. This will be an interesting test. This will be the first time we've done this. shoots. We're about 50 meters of sea level here I think. We have a lot of debris to clean up after this. Right, let's see if this module can land. Okay, we're going for one minute per second. I think we're going to be okay. Okay, no shadow? Interesting. Yeah, so it lands, really, but. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> okay. Doesn't quite land. Good to know. Right, so the problem is, jettisoning these things, they go past the other engines and then just explode. Um, main cell. 6 kilograms. I mean, we could just not jettison anything until we're up in space. And that doesn't require us to change our design, just how we use it. Let's give it a go, see what happens. You know, the extra drag might waste fuel getting up there because we're carrying all of this, but we'll see. So we're coming up to the first attachment, but this time we're not going to do it. So much thrust that when you cut it off, it unbalances everything. Add the, the explosions that we were having before. Obviously, things will be better. We are definitely more stable than we were before. Coming up to our turn. Let's see how easy it is to control this time now that we have the stability we are looking
that, that is moving a lot more easily. As we are spinning a little bit here. Oh, we are wobbling all over the place. Don't know why. It's like crazy powerful. Try and turn the ship around a little bit here. So we need a little bit better control. It looks like we have a great deal less fuel than we did before. It's like even with the advanced SAS we're really not getting any control at all, unless it's not on. It's operation. Yeah, we had a lot more fuel at this point than last time. So carrying all this extra weight around is not really helping. We could do try something like shutting off the engines, jettisoning these things, and the engines. Maybe that's the trick. So we can attempt the, the two, like, shut off engines technique to, um, to jettison these things. Just, uh, like so. Right. Lots of mission fuel. In fact, all the mission fuel, basically. And we have an orbit that's, a, that's above atmosphere, both sides. Looks like we've left a lot of debris in the way, on the way. So, let's, uh, let's attempt to go somewhere. Eve is the target. First things first is we need to get out of here. And the easiest way to do that is behind the planet, because we want to fall. Oh, no, let's put ourselves in an angle there. Right. Apparently that's a four minute escape. Let's try this side. a four minute escape. Three minute escape. And finally at the apoapsis. Uh, well, what's up, That's a mun encounter, not an escape. The other way, mun. Oh, is that an escape? <laughs> well, we use the mud encounter to escape. That works for me. That's a minute less fuel that we need to use. We're practically already facing the right direction. And we're about to find out how just how much fuel we really have with three engines hooked up to one ginormous tank. There we go. We need to burn to get out of Kerbin and engage. 
So in this manoeuvre we're going to slingshot past the moon to escape. Got a bad feeling about this. <laughs> right, so we have it. A really, really crazy thing. We have a Kevin escape instead of a Min Massy A little bit lucky there, I just sort of cut the engines when I felt like it. It, uh, it took about three minutes of burn, so that's three minutes of burn. Six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty-one. So let's go with about twenty-five minutes worth of burn in total. That's a lot. I think we can really achieve a, a, a mission to Eve this way. Let's get rid of the predictor and speed up out of here. Are we going to crash on the moon? It certainly seems like we're about to crash on the moon. <laughs> uh, guys? <laughs> oh dear! Put on the lights. Yeah.